This time we're talking about arrows, throwing knives, and darts. These are ammo types that bandits and playstyles adjacent to that origin will appreciate knowing about the most, but the information here can be useful to any player, since these tools are easy to equip and use, even being a direct counter to specific situations. I'll talk about their similarities, differences, and why you may want to use one over the other. I'll mention throwing daggers briefly, because you can buy these from Kale, and they do more damage than the darts you craft from animal bones, but for the purpose of this video, Throwing knives and darts are considered the same item type. Their mechanics are the same, they're used and animated the exact same way, so anytime I say darts, assume I'm including these purchasable knives as well. You can also buy real arrows from merchants, by the way, and they'll do more damage than arrows carved from bones. So if you can hold onto your runes or you want to sell your bones to buy physical arrows and knives with, you can get slightly better value if all you want is the physical version. Elemental ammo is harder to come by, and you'll mainly want to craft those types in the field. The similarities arrows and darts have among them is that they're both typically crafted from bones, they're both damaging projectiles, and they both exist as a variety of elemental ammo. You can make 5 darts for 2 bones, or 10 arrows for 3 bones. This means arrows give you a little more return for the material cost, though you may sometimes still want darts instead. They're both damaging projectiles. This means that they do achieve some similar things when striking enemies or objects. For example, a dart and an arrow can both shut off flame turrets in dungeons if you manage to hit one. This makes bandits and other origins that start with a bow adept at disarming these traps while placing their body in minimal danger. Not all elements will be equally represented among both arrows and darts, and indeed arrows do typically offer more elemental variety, but both types of item will come with a variety of statuses attached to them, like poison, bleed, fire, and of course, physical. Arrows and darts do have some pros and cons among them. Depending on the kind of player you are, you might appreciate having less weapons and items equipped at a time so you can make your weapon swapping more comfortable. While arrows and darts are used from different equipment slots on your d-pad, this may not seem like much of a distinction, but it truly helps a lot in managing your mental stack, which is basically how much strenuous thinking you have to do at any given time in order to use your actions effectively. I have a link to a useful article about mental stacking gaming in the description. This article is written through the context and lens of fighting games, but it should still be helpful to you. In Elden Ring, of course, that mental stack can in part become bloated due to your physical stack in-game. That is, how many actual items and weapons you have equipped to cycle through and keep track of. Bows, and therefore arrows, are used from either left or right d-pad, while darts are equipped in the down d-pad consumable slot and thrown with your use item button. Now the really cool part is that because darts are a consumable, you can also pouch them, and then use them anytime by holding your interaction button and tapping its d-pad direction. This gives you a lot more flexibility in using them, since it cuts out even the need to cycle to them in your item slot. You can simply throw one from your pouch hotkey, which makes this item very responsive. The major advantage arrows have over darts that will always remain true is their superior range. Darts and knives do not travel a huge distance, whereas arrows can be aimed manually with ease and shot over vast range, especially with the arrow's reach talisman, which increases how far bows can shoot. The talisman is in a treasure chest on this guard platform at the Stormgate. That said, darts are incredibly fast, so if you can find a dart that applies a certain element that you like, their fast rate of use means you can seriously cap out an enemy's gauge. The speed at which you can throw poison darts, for example, means you can poison enemies very quickly. If you wanted to achieve this with a bow, you would have to consume FP and use the barrage skill to even come close to such an application speed, and it's still a little bit slower. The longer range that bows can apply elemental arrows from will keep you somewhat safer, however, so you may still find capping an enemy status gauge with a bow a more comfortable way to play, especially with a short bow which lets you shoot arrows in the air and then immediately fire a second one when you hit the ground. Also, because of knives and darts incredible speed, a useful trick I'll talk about more in a future video is extending melee combos or pressure by weaving throwing knives into your attack flow. As a bandit, this is very handy because it can interrupt or stagger out certain enemies whose poise is soaking up your dagger slashes. Just tag them with a throwing knife if you feel them getting to their senses and keep attacking. An exception to the knives are fast rule is kukris. Kukris are heavy throwing blades that you can buy from the merchant sitting in the east of the Weeping Peninsula. They deal much more damage than most throwing weapons, especially if you have high dexterity, because this item's deck scaling is absolutely illegal. 
They are very slow, however. You definitely can't attack Weave Kukris the way you can knives or darts, but in addition to their intense damage, they're also the thrown version of bleed applicators. Hit an enemy with them enough times and they'll rupture the same as if you shot a bunch of blood arrows or inflicted lots of slashes from bleed daggers on them. Scaling and equipment load is something to consider as well. If you have a lot of points and dexterity, you'll be able to get good damage out of most bows, and if certain bows scale with another stat, or you've ashed a bow to change its scaling, you'll also benefit from the new stat. The scaling of darts and throwing knives, meanwhile, can't be changed. Whatever stat a certain one favors, that's how it'll stay for the entire game. That's one advantage that arrows have over darts or knives, that they're an ammunition type for an existing weapon. That can also be a drawback though, because to use arrows you of course need a bow, and depending on what origin you started with you may not have one. While you can purchase a short bow from the merchant along the beach southwest of the Church of Ella, having to equip a bow to shoot arrows can still be a pain in itself. Almost everything equipable in this game weighs something, including bows, and if your total equipment load is too high, it'll damage the effectiveness of your dodge. Being able to shed the weight of a bow but still have the capacity for ranged poking and ailment application can be a great option and that's where darts excel, since they slot into a separate d-pad button and because they're consumable they can even be pouched, like we covered. These are my initial thoughts on arrows, darts, and knives. More in-depth discussion around each of these or specific types of them will come in the future since I didn't want to take too long in this video. I'm trying to get these done relatively quickly so I can keep putting up general guides as well as guides which help players who are starting a bandit specifically. Thank you for watching, I hope this helped you out a bit, good luck in the lands between, and may the night keep you safe.